two-step, direct and inverse proportion. In these questions, there are three variables with two different proportional relationships, and one of the variables will appear in both relationships. So for example, you'll have a relationship between A and B, and B and C, and you'll be asked to find a link between A and C. These questions are challenging. You must be confident with direct and inverse proportion problems before you're able to complete these question types. There are two broad question types, finding the value or writing a formula that links the variables. We're going to look at both of these types. A is directly proportional to the square of B. B is inversely proportional to the cube root of C. When A equals 27, B equals 3. When B equals 100, C equals 8. Find A when C equals 512. In this question, we need to find the value of A given the value of C. But we do not have a direct link between A and C. So we need to find the relationship between A and B and B and C, and then use both of these to find the value of A given the value of C. One thing to note before we start is that the constant of proportionality, which we will call K, is not necessarily the same in both relationships. So we need to find it separately in both relationships A and B and B and C. The first thing we need to do is find the formula that links A and B. A is directly proportional to the square of B. So A equals K times B squared. We now substitute the value of A and B into the formula. So 27 equals K times 3 squared. 27 equals 9K. We must rearrange so that k is the subject. Divide both sides by 9. k equals 27 divided by 9. k equals 3. We have the formula, therefore, that a equals 3b squared. Now we need to find the formula that links b and c. b is inversely proportional to the cube root of c. So b equals k divided by the cube root of c. We now substitute the value of b and c into the formula. So 100 equals k divided by the cube root of 8. 100 equals k divided by 2. We must rearrange so that k is the subject. Multiply both sides by 2. k equals 100 multiplied by 2. k equals 200. We have the formula, therefore, that b equals 200 divided by the cube root of c. We've been asked to find a when c equals 512. We must substitute c equals 512 into the formula that contains c. Once we do this, we'll get a value of b. We can then use this value of b to find the value of a. We're going to use this formula first. Substituting c equals 512 into b equals 200 divided by the cube root of c, we get b equals 200 divided by the cube root of 512, which is 200 divided by 8. So b equals 25. We now have a value for b. We must substitute b equals 25 into the formula that links a and b. The formula that links a and b is a equals 3b squared. Therefore, a equals 3 times 25 squared. So a equals 3 times 625. a is 1875. X is inversely proportional to the cube of y. Z is directly proportional to the square root of y. When x equals 1, y equals 8. When z equals 3, y equals 36. Write a formula for x in terms of z. This question is different to the previous one because here we're asked to find a formula rather than finding a value. But just like the previous question, we must find the formula that links the given variables. Let's start with x and y x is inversely proportional to the cube of y. x equals k divided by y cubed. So if we substitute the values into this, we get 1 equals k divided by 8 cubed. So 1 equals k divided by 512. If we multiply both sides by 512, k equals 512. We now must use this to find the formula that links x and y. Our formula that links x and y is x equals 512 divided by y cubed. Now let's find the formula that links z and y. 
z is directly proportional to the square root of y. So z equals k times the square root of y. We now need to substitute the values of z and y into this formula. We get that 3 equals k times the square root of 36. So 3 equals k times 6, which is 6k. We now need to rearrange to find k. We must divide both sides by 6. k equals 3 divided by 6. So k equals 1 half. Now we must use this in our formula. z equals half times the square root of y. So z equals the square root of y over 2. We have our formulae that links x and y and y and z, but we need to create a formula for x in terms of z. We have a formula for x in terms of y, so if we find y in terms of z, we can then use that to find x in terms of z. To find y in terms of z, we must rearrange our formula, which has z in terms of y. z equals the square root of y divided by 2. To rearrange, we must multiply both sides by 2. So 2z equals the square root of y. Now we must square both sides so that y is the subject. 2z all squared is 4z squared. So y equals 4z squared. We must now use the fact that y equals 4z squared to find x in terms of z. We're going to substitute 4z squared instead of y into the formula x equals 512 divided by y cubed. So we have x equals 512 divided by 4z squared to the power of 3. We've just replaced the y with the 4z squared. 4z squared to the power of 3 is 64z to the power of 6. We now need to simplify the fraction, divide both the numerator and the denominator by 64. We get that x equals 8 divided by z to the power of 6. And that's our formula for x in terms of z.